how to find quartiles in Excel using the quartile function. Using the quartile function in Excel is very simple. Let's take a look at this data set I have with student grades in column B. Suppose I want to calculate Q1, Q2, and Q3, the first, second, and third quartiles. Excel has a quartile function to do this, and it's very easy to use. They have two types of quartile functions. One is quartile.inc, INC means inclusive, and then they have quartile.exc, meaning exclusive. So let's see how to use these functions and what the difference is between .inc and .exc. Let's use the grade data I have here in column B. I've made a little table here to show the results of using the quartile function, and so we can compare the results between the .exc and the .inc. Let's start with quartile 1 for the grades. First, I place my cursor in E7, since that's where I want the result for the first quartile to be. Now I type in the function. Remember, functions always start with an equal sign, so equal, then Q-U-A-R-T-I-L-E. And as I'm typing, you can see the choices for quartiles are to use .exc and .inc. Let's start by using the quartile.inc function. So I type in .inc, open parentheses, and now it wants us to enter the array of numbers, comma, and the quartile. So the array of numbers is in column B, the grades. So I select the entire column of grades by putting my cursor in the first cell with grade data, B1, click into that cell, and then select the entire column by pressing Control, Shift, and the Down key. You can also select the data by clicking and dragging down the entire column. So now I have B1 through B51 selected as the array of grades. By the way, B1 is just a label, so the quartile function will ignore it. Sometimes Excel doesn't like when you select non-numeric values, but the quartile function doesn't seem to mind. Okay, so now we have B1 through B51 selected. Now type comma, and then the quartile you want. I'm going to type in 1 for quartile 1, the first quartile. Now I close the parentheses, but before I press enter, I want to fix the cell references so that they are absolute cell references rather than relative cell references. I do this by selecting the range B1 to B51. You can see it is highlighted now in blue. And then I hold down the function key. The key that says FN is the function key. And then I press F4. This will place a dollar sign before the row and column references. So it now reads dollar sign B, dollar sign 1, dollar sign B, dollar sign 51. Okay, now I'm ready to press enter and we get 71.25. Now I want to calculate Q2 and Q3. I could type the function over again into the cells E8 and E9, and that would work. But since I fixed the cell references, I can simply drag down to autofill the cells. So place your cursor in the lower right-hand corner of cell E7 and drag it down. Now we get 71.25 for Q2 and Q3, which is obviously not correct because that's for quartile 1. So let's change the number in the function from quartile 1 to quartile 2. Click into E8, and you can see it says B1 through B51, which is correct, and then comma and the number 1. So we need to change that to a 2 since we want Q2, quartile 2. So let's change the 1 to a 2 and press return, and we get 77.5 for Q2. Now let's do the same for Q3. Click into E9, and then change the 1 to a 3 for Q3. Press Enter, and we get 87. So now we have Q1, Q2, and Q3. Now for the min and the max, you can type in a 0 and a 4. Let's start with the max, the largest number. In theory, that would be the fourth quartile. So let's drag down the formula in cell E9 and change the 3 here to a 4. And we get 99. So 99 is the largest grade. And finally, let's go up to where we want the smallest number, that would be the min. We can autofill into E6 from E7, so let's drag the autofill handle up. Yes, that works. 
Then we need to change the quartile from a 1 to a 0 for the minimum and press enter and we get 55. So 55 is the smallest number or the min. Now what about the quartile.exc function? What is the difference between that and the inc function? Well, first off, you cannot get the minimum and the maximum from it. You can only put in quartiles 1, 2, and 3. So let's see what happens. Let's click into F7 and type equal quartile.exc, then open parentheses, and you can see it is asking for array and quartile. So let's put in the array, which are the grades in column B. So I go back to cell B1, click, and then press Control, Shift, and the Down key to select the entire column of data. B1 through B51 is highlighted in blue, so it's selected. So I can actually fix the cell references now, or I could do it before I press Return like I did before. Let's do it now. Press the Function key marked FN, and then press F4, and you will see the dollar signs placed before the letters and numbers. And now these are absolute cell references rather than relative cell references. So I will be able to copy the formula down without the numbers changing. Now type a comma. And now you can see the choices are just for quartiles 1, 2, and 3. It does not give you 0 and 4 as choices for min and max like the dot .inc function does. So let's type in 1, then close parentheses. Now I'm ready to press Enter and we get 70.50, which you can see is different from the number we got using .inc, or inclusive function. Now let's do the same for the median, Q2. Let's copy the formula down to cells F8 and F9. Now let's click into F8, and then change the quartile from a 1 to a 2. Press Enter and we get 77.5. Now let's do that for F9. Let's change the quartile from a 1 to a 3. So we get the third quartile, and press Enter, and we get 87.25. The difference between the two is that quartile.inc is inclusive, so it calculates the quartiles on a percentile range of 0 to 1, inclusive of 0 and 1. The .exc function is exclusive. It bases its calculation on a percentile of 0 to 1 exclusive. I hope this helps you calculate quartiles, and I hope you learned something.